Welcome to Sessions Health Tutorials. Hello, fellow therapists. I'm Ian, a practicing psychotherapist, and I use Sessions Health each day in my own private practice. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at adding a couple or conjoint client in Sessions Health. We're on the client screen, and you can see any conjoint clients easily but with this icon designates a conjoint client. If we want to add a new client, we can just click add and select couple family conjoint. The name field, this is where we're going to give a name to the, the couple family or conjoint client as a whole. So this is separate from any individuals in this conjoint client. So we're just going to call this conjoint client. And now here's the members, and this is where we're going to start adding individuals to our conjoint client. Each member of a conjoint client is going to be added as a separate client in the system. And the reason why is because many times at clinics, people are seen within the context of a conjoint client, but they're also seen individually. And so creating each client separately helps with that. For this conjoint client, we already have these people in our system. And so we can just start typing the name of our members and they will show up in this drop down. We're going to add one other person. So in this conjoint client, we have two existing clients that are already in our system. The identified patient we're going to select as the minor person. And this is purely for insurance purposes. This identifies which person in the conjoint client insurance is going to be used. The billing contact is whose credit cards will be associated with the conjoint client. We can add an additional member. And let's say that this member is someone that we don't have in the system. We can just type this in. And if we have an, an email on file, we can add it. If we don't, that's OK. It's not necessary. And now that we have these members set in place, we can click Create. And now our conjoint client has been created. Our members tab is going to show all of the people in this conjoint client. The settings can be used to see, can this person receive appointment reminders? Can they receive session feedback? Can they book appointments online? And this can be configured for any single person within here. Anyone who's not set up yet, these will be disabled. Once the client has been set up, then these can also be configured. And it's mainly around needing an email address on, on file or having permissions to send emails. Each person in the conjoint client has a portal. An email is required to have access to the portal. If someone has access to the portal, we can send them documents specifically for the context of doing conjoint work. Same with sister person. They do not have an email on record, so we can't send them access. But once they do, we can invite them to get to that person's individual record. We can just click their name. And now we're on the client record for this individual person. 
we need to have an email on file. To invite them to the portal. And if we look at the portal tab, you can see we've they've not yet been invited. We can see they're a member of conjoint client that we just made. If we want to go back to the conjoint client record, we can just click this. And now you can see we're back in the context of the conjoint client. We can click the members tab. And now since we added an email address, we can see we can set them to receive appointment reminders. We can set them to get session feedback. And if we go to the portal tab, now we can invite them to the portal. And we're going to do that now. And that's been done. And it's important to note, each member has their own portal. So even though we're in the context of this conjoint client, each person has their own portal. They cannot see the information of other members' portals. So any information that you send to a specific person is only going to be viewable by them. And so if you want to send separate intake forms or consent forms, you will send it to each member separately as needed. Now, if we look at the client list, we can see our conjoint client has been made, and we can also see the individuals in our system, including sister person who we made. When it comes to scheduling, you want to schedule the conjoint client. So when you type in the client, you're going to type in the name of the conjoint client and for appointment reminders based upon the members tab, we can add an additional appointment reminder and then one hour before. And when we click save, now we can see our appointment reminders. It's showing us we scheduled the conjoint client but the appointment reminders still work on an individual level. Only two people in our conjoint client have email addresses on file, so they are the only ones who are going to receive appointment reminders, and it's telling us that. So if we want the other member of conjoint client to receive appointment reminders, we need to have an email address on record for them in this case, it's a minor, so we're not concerned. Let's assume that they're too young to have an email address, and so they aren't going to need appointment reminders. If we go back to the session, and we can see there was no billable services on this, we need to make sure that we set a billable service amount. If it's zero dollars, no bill can be generated. So when, when we go to the bill and we make the bill and add payment, the payment is going to come from who's ever the billing contact for this conjoint client. So let's go back to our members tab. And if we click the three dot menu, we can see we can ass assign the identified patient or the billing contact. The billing contact is individual person. If we go to their individual record and to the billing tab and settings, we can see they don't have a credit card on file. Our intent would be to send them the credit card authorization form through the client portal and they can add that through the client portal and it will show up here. But if we have the information available, maybe they're in the room with us, we can just add that card directly. And 
And so now we can see individual person has a credit card on file. They're a member of conjoint client and they are the billing contact. So now if we go to the bill for that session that we just made, and now if we click add payment and select credit card, now we are seeing a credit card option because the billing contact for this conjoint client has a credit card on file. And now we can just click add payment. Now this is paid in full. This concludes the tutorial for working with conjoint clients. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to us at support at sessionshealth.com.